we're talking about English composition, particularly for college papers and essays and that sort of thing, I often use several terms that I want to make sure you understand. I'm going to give you some examples of what I'm talking about. So when I'm either teaching about composition or I'm grading papers or essays, I often use terms like syntax, diction, and language conventions. And I want to make sure that I'm clear about what these things mean. They mean very different things, but they're all important parts of writing well at the college level. And so I'm going to use an example of a thesis statement and then show you what I mean by each of these each of these terms and provide some some thoughts on how best to use proper diction, syntax, and language conventions. So let's say that this is my thesis statement for an essay or a research paper. And you can read it, but I'll read it along with you. The Beatles not only changed popular music, but their impact on popular culture can still be seen more than 60 years after they became a global phenomenon. So I think that's a really good, tight, but comprehensive thesis statement. It says everything that I, I want to say. It gives the reader an idea of where I'm going to go and the kinds of points I'm going to make, the research I'm going to be including, and where the essay is e eventually going to take the reader. And it also helps the reader anticipate that I'm going to need to support that statement with research and techniques in the writing. But it's a good, clean, solid, straightforward thesis statement. So when we're talking about syntax, it means basically how a sentence is structured, how the words are put together, how it's organized. And so here's a, a sentence, the same thesis statement basically, with awkward syntax in which the basic ideas um, are the same, but it's awkward and a little hard to follow. The Beatles, more than 60 years after becoming a global phenomenon, not only changed popular music, but their impact on popular culture can s still be seen, which they did. So there is, an, there is awkwardness throughout here. One of the signals that your syntax is off is many commas. If you have a sentence that has, say, more than two commas, or even more than one comma, but, but more than two, you might look at the syntax, how it's been put together, and see if you can rearrange it in a more obvious and clear and clean structure so that it flows more carefully, more thoughtfully. When you insert commas into a sentence, it is an opportunity for the reader to pause, but you don't want to just clunk up your phrasing. And so this is what I'm talking about with syntax. The words are essentially the same. There is in this one a, um, a dependent clause at the end, which doesn't belong at all and is essentially not grammatically correct. But mostly this is just taking the same words and reorganizing them in a, in a really awkward way. Here's something that a lot of dare I say it, professors and instructors and really smart people tend to do, which is to overcomplicate their language, use more words and bigger words than necessary, sometimes because they're trying to impress you with all this vocabulary, sometimes because they just don't know any better. This is how you're supposed to write, they think, and so they, they do this. But listen to this sentence compared to the, the first one, the original thesis. The Beatles not only metamorphosed the auditory entertainment of the masses, but their influence on the zeitgeist of society remains discernible in excess of six decades subsequent to their ascension to worldwide notoriety. So a lot of words there that are not necessary, three words where one will do, 
it's just, it looks like, and it feels like it's impressive. Oh, someone really knows lots of words. But your point here isn't to show how many words you know, it's to convey information as cleanly and clearly as possible. This is bad diction. It's diction that is over complex and unnecessarily long, and we want to avoid it. Also, just one other note. This happens a lot. The word notoriety. The word notoriety is often misused. It its main definition is a negative connotation. So when you say something is notorious, that is not being kind. That is a negative connotation. So what you mean instead of notoriety here probably is popularity, which is a positive thing. So when we're talking about language conventions, it's basically grammar, spelling, punctuation, capitalization, that kind of stuff, the basic foundations of writing cleanly and well. And so here's an example of the same information written with multiple errors in language conventions. So the Beatles aren't capital, isn't capitalized. Um, the first sentence is a sentence fragment, not a complete sentence. I I'm not a fan of starting a sentence with but. I mean, there are times when you can do it, but it makes it feel like an incomplete sentence. There are errors throughout here that can easily be avoided if you are using Word. You can just keep spell check running, and it'll help you with not just spell check, but grammar issues. I plead with students to, to run their draft essays before they submit them, their final essays before they submit them through Grammarly or a similar kind of online tool, which will identify for you the errors and make suggested changes. So you don't necessarily, if you, if you struggle with grammar, if you struggle with spelling, if you struggle with pun punctuation, you are not alone. There are a lot of smart people there are college professors, there are CEOs who have similar struggles. Use the tools available to you to identify these errors and correct them. There is never a good reason to submit a paper, even a draft, full of this kind of error.